It's not going to be easy for you. And to get that strength, you, you will gain that strength the closer you are to Allah, the stronger you'll get. And you'll get close to Allah when you recite His words calmly in the middle of the night. And then Allah starts talking about the benefits of the, the night prayer. Why specifically the night time? Inna nashi layli. No doubt about it. Just getting up in the night. Hiya ashaddu wat'an. It is more firm when it comes to planting your feet. In other words, there are no distractions. There's nobody else calling you. There are no other obligations. The world is asleep. Your feet are planted more. And then, نَشِئَةَ uh, اللَّيْلِ يعني تَصَرُّفًا وَأَقْوَ مُقِيلًا Actually, no, I skipped that. العبادة التي تنشأ بيد All the worship you're going to stand up and do at that time is going to be firmer. It's going to plant your feet deeper into the ground. What actually means to penetrate onto the ground and step. What يَطَعُ To step on the earth and to leave an imprint. So your feet will get imprinted where you stand. You'll be planted. You'll be firm. And this is actually imagery, kinaya in the Qur'an. It alludes to something. And the allusion here is, when the Prophet's feet are planted in the ground in, in prayer, he will be, his feet will be planted when he stands by his message. Ifbatul qadam. You know, we say, وَثَبِّتْ أَقْدَامَنَا وَنْصُرْنَا عَلَى الْقَوْمِ الْكَافِرِينَ Plant our feet firm. Well, you'll become firm in your beliefs and firm in your, in your delivery, in your confidence when you develop this relationship with Allah. That's the instruction given to the Prophet ﷺ. وَأَقْوَى مُقِيلًا And it's more upright in, in terms of speech. In other words, your, your words are not filled with distraction of anything else. This is the best time to speak with me. And also some, some argue here, وَأَقْوَى مُقِيلًا It's the most upright, it's the best time. To be speak in terms of speech with Allah, because Allah is where in the middle of, in the last portion of the night, is the closest. So the best time to talk to me is then. Wa aqwa muqilan. Just ask Allah to forgive you. That's all I'm asking. Ask your master to forgive you. Inna hu kana ghafara. He no doubt he keeps forgiving over and over and over again. You see this sama. He will rain the sky upon you midraran in good continuous life giving rain. Rain that continuously comes is called midrar. Now notice the punishment that destroyed this nation was rain also. Was water also. But actually the, the, when rain is calmed down, when it's not gone wild, then it's a source of life. It's a source of vegetation. It's a source of you know, a, a, healthy, a healthy society. وَيُمْدِدْكُمْ And if you just ask Allah for forgiveness, He will extend you. بِأَمْوَالِ وَبَنِينَ With money and children. All these benefits will open to you. Notice the form, right? Yursil is connected with the next word with a kasra, right? Which makes it majzum. Then yumdid, not yumiddu, it's yumdid. Then wayaj'al, it's majzum, majzum, majzum. The question is, why are they all majzum? Why is there a sukun at the end of every present tense? It's because this is jawabu talab. There's talab on the one hand, istaghfiru rabbakum. And it says, though in between, wa in tastaghfiruhu, and if you were to ask forgiveness of him, then these things will happen. What things will happen? The sky will rain water, abundant water. You will have more in money, and you will have more in children. And he, he will install gardens for you, and he will put together rivers for you. He'll install rivers for you. Life on this earth will become beautiful for you if what? You ask Allah for forgiveness. This is a passage about what are the benefits of istighfar. We thought the benefit of istighfar is forgiveness. Obviously, somebody's asking for forgiveness. The greatest thing they're hoping for is forgiveness itself. Forgiveness comes with these benefits. He'll put gardens out for you. He'll lay rivers down for you. What is wrong with you people? You have no expectations from the grand nobility of Allah. You don't hope from Allah to show you dignity. وَقَدْ خَلَقَكُمْ أَطْوَارًا And He's the one that already created you in stage after stage. Tawr means stage. Atwar means you, you were babies and you were adults and you've matured so much. He's the one that did that for you. أَلَمْ تَرَوْ كَيْفَ خَلَقَ اللَّهُ سَبْعَ سَمَوَاتٍ طِبَاقًا Haven't you taken a look and reflected how Allah created seven skies, one on top of the other in layers? وَجَعَلَ الْقَمَرَ فِيهِنَّ نُورَ And in those skies Allah placed, within them He placed a light. وَجَعَلَ الشَّمْسَ سِرَاجًا Meaning the moon first, and then he placed the sun as a lamp. وَاللَّهُ أَنْبَتَكُمْ مِنَ الْأَرْضِ نَبَاتًا 
And Allah is the one who caused from the earth all kinds of things to sprout for you. Anbatakum nabata. All kinds of things to sprout for you. Thumma yu'idukum fiha. Then He is the one who brings it out, He returns it back to you from within it. Meaning the plants sprout and they give seeds and you put the seed back in and it brings it back to more produce. He keeps giving you more and more out of the same food. وَيُخْرِجُكُمْ إِخْرَاجًا And He continuously brings things out for you. وَاللَّهُ جَعَلَ لَكُمُ الْأَرْضَ بِسَاطًا And He leveled the earth down for you and made it easy for you to walk on. لِتَسْلُكُمْ مِنْهَا سُبُلًا فِجَاجًا So that you can pursue from it all kinds of paths and go through all kinds of valleys. Fijaj means, you know, open space between two, two mountains. You know, otherwise it's hard to tread and uh, or, you know to tread that path. And he opened those roadways for you. قَالَ نُوحُ الرَّبِّ إِنَّهُمْ عَصَوْنِي نُوحَ Allah continues. So it's a, this this part was all. It's still continuously still. It's a conversation between Allah and Nuh, and Nuh is talking. Alayhi salam. Nuh is saying, "I said this to them. I said this to them. I said this to them. All the things you taught me to tell them, I told them." I tried to remind them publicly, privately, in council settings, in family settings, all these settings I exhausted. And then Allah says, go back and says, and then finally Nuh said, Rabb, my master, innahum asawni, they have disobeyed me. Now the past tense is, yud asawni, they've disobeyed me. Not ya'asunani, they disobey me. Which means, he's done with them. <laughs> it's done, ya Rabb. وَاتَّبَعُوا And they have followed مَنْ لَمْ يَزِدْهُ مَالُهُ وَوَلَدُهُ إِلَّا خَسَارَ They have followed someone who cannot increase them in wealth, nor can he increase them in children, except in more loss. That's the only thing that they can increase in now. وَمَكَرُوا مَكْرًا كُبَّارًا And they made a huge plot against him. They made a huge plot against, you know, undermining his efforts. And it seems, the closer he got to building the ark, the more intense his da'wah became. And so they started seeing some effect of his call and the warning, you know, because you can, can imagine if he's got only a one or two days worth of work left, he's really scared for these people. So he's going out of his way to warn them now like never before. So some people are getting a little shaken and they're being pulled towards him and the leaders of their tribe see that. So they made a new plan. And their plan was to make people feel like if they accept Nuh's call, not only are they dumb, because they would think that the messengers, they're crazy people, etc. Don't follow a crazy person. But actually they will make people feel like they're traitors. That they're abandoning the, the expectations of their elders. That they're an embarrassment to their family legacy. That sort of line of reasoning. So they said, وَقَالُوا لَا تَذَرُنَّ آلِهَتَكُمْ don't you dare leave your gods, they said. They went around making a, another a counter da'wah. وَلَا تَذَرُنَّ وَدَّنْ Don't you dare abandon wadd. One of the names of their false gods. وَلَا سُوَاعَ And don't leave سُوَاعًا وَلَا يَهُوثْ Don't leave يَهُوثْ and يَعُوك وَنَصْرْ These are names of their gods. They called them by name so they could scare people and say, you're going to leave Yahuth? You're going to leave Nasr after all he's done for you? Have you forgotten his powers? Don't you think that the curse will come on you, etc., etc.? So they would, they they went on this, you know, this huge campaign to undermine the call of of uh, Nuh alayhi salam, and it worked. وَقَدْ أَضَلُّوا كَثِيرًا and they misguided a lot of people. They were able to get a lot of people to stay. وَلَا تَزِدِ الظَّالِمِينَ إِلَّا ضَلَالًا and this, these, these, these guides, these misguides, these idols were not able to increase wrongdoers in anything except even more misguidance. Mimma khati'atihim, because of the kinds of mistakes they made, ughriqu, they were drowned. Fa'udkhilu nara, then they were thrown into the fire. Then they were entered into fire. Allah tortured this nation with water and... Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. If you enjoyed this video, please do share it with friends and family. If you want to see more videos from this series, click on the box at the top. If you want to see other videos, click on the box at the bottom. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thanks.